Hello again, Perlers. This is part two of my About page. If you've been following what I've written so far, you'll understand why I am so committed to giving you the facts on nutrition. This is so important because it will help you to feel better, look better, be better with a mind that's thinking clearly. And all this comes down to the colon. You may not have heard this yet, but I will make this bold declaration. The colon not only keeps your organs, your cells and your tissues functioning, but it also keeps your brain functioning. How you feel and how you think is the result of what you have been consuming. Today I will tell you my life story, well, a shortened version. Not because I like talking about myself, but because I want to give you examples on how my health impacted on my attitude, my behavior, and my personality. Growing up in Singapore in school, I remember being very shy. I did not like participating in sports and I couldn't wait for the bell to ring so I could go home. I suffered from what my mother called a nervous stomach. I was plagued with stomach cramps, diarrhea, an acid reflux well into my 20s and did not realize then but what I know now was caused by the spicy food we ate and especially after having fruit after our meal. My home was my comfortable cocoon. There was a chai who looked after me, our cook and my parents worked, so they were not home until late in the evening. I had the house to myself. No siblings to bother me. My sister was born when I was five years old, and my brother was born when I was 13. If I had homework, I would do that first, so my dad would be happy. After that, I indulged in something I loved the most, my imagination. And that was my most treasured time, those afternoons with no one to bother me. And that was my life, so to speak, up to the age of 11. I read lots of books on everything. I fantasized about being a writer and writing stories that everyone would love reading. Later, in 1968, I worked at the Sydney Morning Herald as a cadet journalist and a year after worked in Singapore with the Singapore Herald. Part of my fantasies came true. I listened to music and I would sing in front of my mother's dressing table mirror and imagined I was singing in a band. I wrote lots of songs. I joined a correspondence school in Sydney and got music lessons by mail. From 1971 to 1979, I was a singer in a band, we travelled on ships, we travelled to parts of Southeast Asia, and it was fun. The next thing I wanted to do was to learn what my dad did, and that was being smart and picking shares in the stock market and helping his friends do the same. I read the business pages of the Straits Times 
and learnt the names of the shares. And I felt really proud when in the evenings I would ask my dad, how was the market today? Did those shares go up or down? And at the age of 18, I bought my first lot of shares. I have never looked back and now I have this lovely understanding of how to invest. I want to show you and that will come in my future blog. Those were the dreams I had when I was young and you could say your dreams came true but there was still a long way to go and as usual there were hiccups along the way. At 31, I got married and moved to Sydney. I was still not right in my health. My nervous stomach was still there and in fact it got worse. In Sydney, I wasn't Shirley Manasseh that popular singer. I wasn't the daughter of that stockbroker, Alec. I was in an office with many people who thought I was up myself because I didn't talk much and I lived in the eastern suburbs. My confidence was at an all-time low and my personality was somewhat hidden. My dreams then was just wishful thinking with never a hope of coming true. You'll like this part. Later in 1981, when I read Diet and Salad, and it's still on my desk today, I decided to stop having fruit after my meals. That made a great impact on my health. My stomach cramps had gone, diarrhea had virtually gone, and I felt human again. I slowly switched my atrocious diet to having more salads, and I stopped having those cakes or muffins or biscuits which was served in the office in the good old days when we had tea ladies. And it did make a difference. Now you're talking. I was liberated, motivated and energized. My interest in the share market grew and my husband and I did discos on the weekend and I was in touch with my love of music again. Now at aged 35, soon after I had my son Sam, after a year of investigations and tests, I was diagnosed with premature menopause. Now how does one deal with this? Well, it took time but that has given rise to me knowing a lot more about this affliction and I can help you with what I have learned very soon. Next, I realized I needed to build my self-confidence. Coming from Singapore, it was difficult to assimilate with this Western culture with the sports and with the talks on children and babies and food. I had to learn more. So I joined a business network and met professional people whom I thought, yes, this may help me. I went to many, many seminars. This happened just after Sam was six and I was able to go out after work and build my brain and it fed me with positives and negatives which I learned from. 
This then brought me more in touch with the people I worked with. I related to them and they started to like me. And soon I became popular. I was assertive on the phone answering queries and I felt much better about myself. And now this is where I am today. The result of a lot of pain and joy, a lot of struggles and a lot of times when there was peace and harmony and happiness. You see, experiences are all good, even if they're bad, because it teaches you to be resilient and strong and it helps you to go further. This is the time at this stage. I thought, well, time for me to take it easy. But I didn't stop there because at 68, I decided to join a gym that was half a kilometer from where I lived. I didn't think it would change my life so dramatically. It gave me energy that I never thought I had. I was assuming that my walking and my Pilates on the mat in my study twice a week was more than enough to give me the strength in my muscles and my legs. But I was so wrong. Going to the gym, and now it's been nearly four years, has given my memory the boost that I didn't think I could have. I started writing this blog only a year ago. It was in my mind for 20 years but it wasn't the right time for me. The words came easily and of course I have a brilliant editor who cuts me down and puts these sentences in order. I didn't have to look up Google every few seconds. My thesaurus, yes sometimes. My dream to write has brought me closer to my family and to people I had never met before. We now have a great team committed to working together to make this a success. This blog didn't come by accident. It came with a dream as a child. It took too long for this to come true, but I'm happy it has. And there's so much more to tell you and to share with you. But for now, I'll say goodbye and see you soon.